everybody, and welcome to tonight's Section 5 matchup between the Hornell Red Raiders and the visiting Waco Eagles. Chris Smith. Well, we was going to start out with good field position after that kickoff by Wyatt. Uh, starting quarterback for the Gold Eagles. Familiar name for the Eagles is uh, Connor Engler. His brother was Eagles player with the Eagles quarterback for three or four years. That was number 24 for the Eagles. Brandon DeGill. Jesse Mitchell. Seems light, doesn't it? I guess yeah. we're all right. Can't hear anything. For some reason, we got some technical issues here. There's number 24 again for the Eagles, Brandon DeGardi. Gained about two out in the Hornell territory. Third and eight for the Eagles at the Hornell 48 yard line. You got Justin Horton split wide left. Like DeAndre Green, right, wide right. Engler's first pass of the game. And complete the number 23. And that was DeAndre Green. Hey, 
base hooker. He's going to be wide right. Oh, or no fumble. But I believe they recover it. On the 50. Josh Tyler's in the game. As they have for years, that the receivers bring in the plays. Two off, each receiver with uh, each play. Oh, Luke Smith on a keeper, and he's going to go all the way. Untouched for a touchdown. Yeah, touchdown Luke Smith. It's Friday the 13th. Everything's messing up here. We lost our stream, oh. so we're not live. Work was absolutely, absolutely insane today on Friday the 13th. Now, was this with the hot spot or was it all no, new now? No, this is the school. That's what I thought. Uh, it worked so good today, too. Did it? Yeah, perfect. I tested it. I didn't think, I couldn't hear myself like I normally can. I still can't either. I can't hear, It's not something's not right. I can hear you real well, Bob. You can hear me real well? Yeah. Oh. Turn yours up more then, I guess. Is that better? Yeah. You look like a teenager over there on your phone. What's that? You look like a teenager oh, over there on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, for some reason, everything's messed up here. I get a good kick out looking down there, seeing these kids with beards. First off, it's got to be uncomfortable with that chin strap. Secondly, I'm 56 years old, and I couldn't grow a beard like Hunter Davis. I know. It's amazing. So we have Spence Wyan ready to kick off for the Raiders after their first touchdown and an extra point, which makes it 7 0 with 8.17 to go in that first quarter. One drive, one touchdown. Nice kick. Going to be taken at the 15 yard line and brought back out to the 30, so gain of about 15, maybe 14 where the Golden Eagles will take over first and 10 at their own 29 yard line. Here we got Connor Engert, a quarterback. I believe. Connor Engler. Engler, I always say it wrong. And, oh, apparently his father's not coaching anymore. No. Uh, his father, we became pretty close when uh, they let my family uh, be the captain for Hornell and the Schneider family captain for Wayland. Yep. Those whaling kids were so special. Brought down probably just a maybe a yard or so behind the line of scrimmage. Each kid on that team without the coach telling them shook my hand and gave Kim a hug after the game. remember making a comment the Engler boy's older brother was quarterback and he came off the field and he'd gotten a bloody nose and there was blood everywhere he just wiped it off put his helmet on and went back out there I said that's a football player yeah so it's second and ten from the 30 Whelan's gonna drop back for try second pass it's gonna be picked off by Davis and he's gonna go in untouched that wasn't even close mm -hmm. Hornell's gonna go up 13-0 Seven seventeen to go in the first quarter. So amazing. That touchdown. wasn't even close. No, it wasn't. I mean, he floated that right into his hands. That's one of those ones you drop because it's so yeah soft. I guess is a good word for it. Or it's you know it's like missing a layup in ba in basketball yeah. wide open. You know? Yeah. I don't remember, but I'm sure I missed many of those. Like to say on the air, congratulations to uh, 
Bobby Peicher. Oh, thank you, Chris. Tonight he will be inducted into the Horner Hall of Fame, and I believe rightfully so. It's been a lot of fun over the years. We've had a lot of fun up here. It's a very frustrating tonight, losing <laughs> yeah. when the stream is supposed to be perfect, I, and I can't. there's no way I can get it back on. Uh. So Hornell ready to kick off for the third time already tonight. And Spence Wyan does the kicking. I'm hoping uh, Hunter Babcock is only out for the one game. Eagles have three back deep. They've got number 13, Colton Wood. Number 23, DeAndre Green. And I can't say, I think the other one is number 24, uh, Brandon DeGardi. That'd be DeGardi taking the ball. And he's going to be brought down at the 26 yard line. Will be first and 10 for the Golden Eagles. Yep. I was counting here, Bob. I think I counted six sophomores and one, two, three, three freshmen on the e on the Golden Eagle I squad. Just to Sean just texted Kim and said he's not working. Oh. I just wanted to let you know. Well, it's going to take over first to ten at twenty-six. Ooh. And that was number 33 with the run. Good. Nikolai. Can you help me out there, Bob? What's the number? Is that 33? 33. <laughs> Zastawerny. Zastawerny, yep. A sophomore. <laughs> when you have a name like Smith, everything's difficult. Yeah. Peicher, I before E, E before I. Mine's I, E, or E, I, P, E, I. Yes. Second and six, so it was a gain of four on that last play. This is going to be 24. And that's Brandon Diagardi. As I'm looking at the uh, Wayland roster here, they should have a good team for the next year or two. Yeah. They've only got, I, I'm, I'm trying to count real fast here, one, two, three, Four seniors, rest are juniors, sophomores, and like I said, a couple freshmen. I always felt you got you have to be an exceptional athlete to be brought up as a freshman because I mean, you're playing with the Hunter Davises with that already have beards. I mean, they're yeah they're men, and some of these kids are just kids. Wheelins in shotgun position, so they're going to pass, and Hornell's going to. Gonna be out of bounds. And boy, the quarterback was hit hard by number 77 for Hornell. And that's Luke Nobles. Just flattened the quarterback as soon as he let go. No flags. Good hit. Yep. But he thinks about it the next time he goes back to pass. <laughs> and the Golden Eagles are gonna punt, and back is gonna be Spencer Wyan and Hunter Davis. I'd like to see him give it to uh, Rayon. Yes. And let him get ahead of steam and see him stop him. It's going to be a nice punt. It's going to be fielded by Wyan. It's up underneath it, who's already into Wayland territory. And he's got one guy to beat. And number two takes him down for Wayland. And that's going to be Connor Engler. And Wyan took it all the way down to, I'm going to say, the Wayland 18. Nope, my, the Wayland 23. 23-yard 23 line. So Hornell's going to have a first and 10 with 23 yards to go before the uh, another score. Uh, 
And there goes Grenthal right through the middle. Wow. Must have been a little bit of, I didn't, he got caught up in the, in the line there for just a second and he went right straight through. Once he, uh, he got past the, the line, uh, the linebackers were nowhere to be found and he went in untouched. Which brings it to 20 to nothing. Five minutes and seven seconds to go in the quarter. Mm -hmm. Milner back for his third try for extra point. Smith with the hold. The boots. It looks like it was good. I always wait for the referees because I don't know how many times I thought it was good and it wasn't. And I thought they missed it and went right down the middle. So it makes the score 21, Hornell 21, uh, Wayland Cohockton 0. Five minutes and seven seconds left to go in the first quarter, not the first half. So we can see this blowout on. <laughs> yeah. Now Whalen's going to have, you know, they're going to be forced to do a lot of passing, and uh, the Hornell backs are just sitting back there waiting. The one that. Uh, Davis picked off wasn't I mean it was right to him and it was nice and soft. It's Wyan ready for the kickoff again. Remember that first game we did, Bob? Livonia kept faking all that stuff, and, they, and, and, and it never worked. Yeah. They faked, what, two kickoffs in a row, maybe a punt, and a bunch of fancy plays, and I think Tornell stuffed every one of them. Nice kick by Wyan, taking it to the 15-yard line. The Whalen runner, number 24, once again. Brandon DeGardi brought down at the at their own 34-yard line. Well, let's make it right at the 35. Tip of the ball is touching the 35-yard line. Where the Golden Eagles will take over first and 10. Just a tick over five minutes to go in the first quarter. Yep. I got a feeling the Hornell defensive backs are going to be back there just salivating. Guardy brought down by Wyan and a couple other Hornell players. I'm thinking Spencer must know Diagardi because uh, before Diagardi even looked at him, he had his hand up the <laughs> for him to help him up. Help him up, yeah. Yeah, he must be a couple buddies. Diagardi again, He's got himself over the uh, 40 to about the 41 or 42 yard line. Can sit down, hang out. Okay, third and five from the 40. Golden Eagles looking for their first first down. Gain of about two, maybe three. And that was number 33, DeAndre Green, I believe that is. No, it's uh, Nicolia Zestwin <laughs> Zestwin something NY. And I'm sure that doesn't stand for New York. Zestwini back for the... Uh, punt again for the Golden Eagles. Oh, off oh, the side of his bad. foot. That's going to go out of bounds. Oh, no, it's not. Spence Wine picked it up on a bounce and uh, brought it about five more yards uh, up the field. Looked like it was going to bounce out of bounds. 
Spencer's got to have a lot of confidence in those hands. Cornell's going to take over at their own 45-yard line, first and 10, up 21-0, to zero, two minutes and 59 seconds left in the first quarter. It's like the blitz is on. They're bringing everybody. So if Luke can get this pass out, well, he's just going to run around everybody. Oh. Oh, he threw the player down by his face mask. Wow. I've never seen that. <laughs> is that, can you do that? Yeah, he grabbed him right by the face mask and pulled him to the ground, but I don't see any flags. Of course, I've never seen a play like that in my life. Neither have I. Luke Smith, but first with the stiff arm and then grabbed him by the helmet, kind of threw him out of the way. I think that the Whalen players thought he was going to run out of bounds. This has got to be tough for them to sit down there and just keep taking a beating like this. It's not even the second quarter yet. Yeah. And they know there's a whole game left. And with that said, you can tell that we won't be here long after halftime in which Bobby Peicher will be inducted into the Hornell Sports Hall of Fame. Yep. There goes Davis through the line. Easy Untouched. Score. Touchdown. Twenty-seven to zero. Two minutes and forty seconds to go in the first half. Extra point is good. Hornell goes up Spencer Wyan ready to kick off for the fifth time tonight. He's going to have to ice his leg after the game. We're going to have to stitch it back on if it falls off. Oh, the ball got loose on number 53, hit him in the hands, and that was uh, Ben Wood. He uh, backpedaled and picked it back up before the Hornell players could jump on it. So Whalen's going to take over first and 10 from their own 32 yard, or excuse me, 27 yard line. I guess if you're going to have your leading rusher sit out a game, this would be the one. Yeah. That's Diagardi. He keeps going, running up the points like this. Uh, they'll put in the second, third string, and maybe... Uh, Somebody will tell me I only got to play a few plays my whole senior year and they'll let me come down and, have, <laughs> and make up for lost time. <laughs> Who'd ever want to hit a cop? <laughs> Timeout. Time out. With 2.18 left to, to play in the first quarter, Hornell up 
when the Golden Eagles come back out of their, uh, their uh, timeout huddle. It's going to be second and 12 from their own 25. I see there's another camera down on the field, Bob. Did you give him permission? Where's that? Right there on the 38 yard line. Red, looks like a red uh, raincoat. I can see him. Right here. It's Davis? No, right here. At the very last walking down. Oh, it's, uh, oh, ETM. Yeah, Chuck Br Brame. Chuck Brame. What's ATM? No, ETM, W-E-T-M, NBC. Oh. I thought it was Barry Walsh that sent somebody down there from, <laughs> from the factory. Okay. Eagles are ready to go. Second and 12 from the 25. 218 left in the first quarter. Cornell up 28 0. First completed pass of the night for the Eagles. Gain of two, two and a half, maybe three. Still going to be third down and six or seven to go. Two split wide right, two split wide left. It's going to be a pass. Engler back. He's on the run. There's going to be Trey. Well, that was a nice play by Engler. He uh, kept from being sacked. He completed the pass, but it was about right back to the line of scrimmage. Where it's going to be fourth down. I'm assuming that uh, the Golden Eagles are going to punt. Yeah, much better punt that time. It's going to be taken by Davis at the 40. Whale and player hit him, but bounced off. And he's going to be brought down right at the 50. Looks like Engler was at the bottom of the pile. Along with maybe, if I read the number right, number 55, Daniel Harder. Cornell's going to take over first and 10 at the 50. Gonna have Wyan split wide right, Styles split wide left. Looks like Grenthal and Davis in the backfield. Davis has it on the pitch. Tripped up. Yep, tripped up. But he's out over the 50 yard line into Wayland territory. It'll be probably second and five, second and six. Green and Hooker in, running in the plays. There won't be a whole lot of passing tonight. Going to run the clock down. That's the end of the first quarter. Horn all up 
second quarter. Reynolds passing is going to go out to Wyan. He's out. They take it down at about the 34 yard line. It's going to be a first down. About 16. 15, 15. Second down. Excuse me, first and 10 at 35. Smith is going back again. I'm sure they don't really want to pass, but they got to get their pay. You know, next week starts the section. Yeah, you got to keep it. Yeah, you can't just. Yeah, a little loud. <laughs> I think that's a first loss of uh, yardage for Hornell, and there's yet to be a flag. Flash from the pet, JJ Reinhardt. Pass behind the line of scrimmage and Davis. Brings it out to about the 28. Gain of about 10. It's going to be third down and two. for those that uh, were watching this live. I know uh, ex-Cornell quarterback Sean Hillman was down in the Carolinas, I believe North Carolina watching. And made sure they let uh, his parents know to come up here and tell us that uh, we were offline, which we knew. Something strange happened here because everything was screwed up when I came up. Friday the 13th. I hope nobody was up here messing with your stuff. It was locked, the door was locked. That's number 23 for Whalen. He got away from a few. He's a little bit of yardage. He didn't quite make it over the 
the half uh, into the Hornell territory, but uh, Wayland's going to take over first and ten. It's going to be at their own. Right where they're going to mark it. It's going to be at their own 45-yard line. It was DeAndre Green on the uh, return. have our first penalty of the night. I believe that's going to be a procedure on Whalen. And it is. It's going to march them back. Five, right Bobby? Uh, yep, five yard penalty. First down, 15 to go at their own 40. They're going to come right out passing. They're going to go right through the hands of number 80, Derek Cheeseman. Brings up second and 15 from the 40, from their own 40. 8.02 remaining. back going for a bomb but it's not even close that was to number 82 uh, Max Markle it's gonna bring up fourth down excuse me third down and 15 we're only just trying to get something going get on the board that'd be disheartening to go through practice all week long it'll be down 35 nothing 727 to go still in the first half they're out there doing sprints and suicides, and crabs, and all kinds of things that uh, they didn't enjoy, along with you know the scrimmaging part of practice. But uh, it's got to be disheartening. I said a Wernie brought down from behind. I didn't see who else caught him. 77 was Luke Nobles. He's had quite a game out there tonight. With his Lawrence Taylor face mask. <laughs> Remember when we were young, the cool thing was the Larry Zonka. I don't know what you want to call that thing that he always had. And any kids listening to this will have no idea who Larry Zonka was. And that's Davis fielding the punt. He's going to go up the left sideline. Still on his feet. Oh. He's going to be brought down about the 41 yard line. Yeah, twisted that time. Yeah, twisted up. Bounce back up. He's having one of quite a game in the absence of Babcock. text my son and daughter during every time uh, Hornell scores and I think my battery's finally dead. <laughs> it's not even half time. And it's going to be, I think that's Krenthal. Nope, it's number 26 for Hornell. And that is Tyler Garner, who got quite a few carries last week. Garner won't be getting too many more if he lets go of the ball again like that the first time he touches it. We have Davis and I believe that's Grenthal in the backfield. Be Davis with a handoff. I believe he's got the first down. 
And he's going to be into the Gold Eagle territory once again. Third and one. Ball's right on the 50. I thought they had gone into the ter in, uh, Eagle territory. That's going to be Davis with the ball. He's got the first down. He's going to be brought down at the 45 yard line of the Golden Eagles. This I'm positive of. They are now in Eagle territory. Just keep that clock winding now. It's just they're running. I think it's because the crowd wants to see Bob Pleasure at halftime. Big thrill. I Can't like get it. a stream right. Uh, yeah, that's too bad because. Geez, oh, Hornell. Oh, oh, I missed that that for the first time. It's about a 10 yard loss. Smith dropped back in 23 and. and which is green, and I didn't see the other. They got to him quick. Somebody missed their assignment. They have Styles and Wyan going back in with the new play. I have a feeling this time it will be a pass. Trying to get some of that yardage back. It's almost the first positive thing that's happened for Whalen tonight. Yeah. Three forty-nine left in the half. Green pass. So I'm that's number 24 for Hornell. He's gonna he may go all the way. And he does. That was last week we still don't have him on the roster, Bobby. He, last week he had a touchdown. Remember we couldn't figure out who he was? Yeah. I can't remember no two. I don't remember who it is. <laughs> uh, so good run though. That was quite a run. He just playing out, ran a couple of the, the Whalen players who were hot on his tail. It's got to be a good feeling. I will live vicariously through all the running backs here. <laughs> Milner back for the extra point. And it's up and through. No good. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, yeah. So now it's only 41 to 0. He didn't give Smith time to spin the ball around because I'm pretty sure he kicked it right on the laces. Yeah. You know you're having a good game when you come off after missing an extra point. You still have the biggest <laughs> smile as you had all night long. Yeah. It's tough. We've got uh, Milner and Buell on the basketball team. We're going to have some bangers out there. Yeah, amazing. Will Buell, will Buell play varsity? Uh, does he go out for basketball? Um, uh, he was a basketball player. He didn't play this past year. Spencer Wyan to kick off once again for Hornell. 3.27 left in the first half. Hornell up 41-0. Right at the 20 by the Eagles. He's going to be brought down by number 47, Jason Roy. Cornell will take over first and 10 with 3.21 to go in the first half. Join Connors and Ferris in supporting the Kelly Tough Every Score, benefiting Hunter's Hope. Every time the Bills score, children win. For more information, visit connorsandferris.com. If you get hurt at work, you want to be able to turn to a professional you can trust. Someone on your side. Call 262-COMP today and get the results you deserve. Connors and Ferris. 
center. Going to drop back and try to pass, but they got half a it out of bounds. throw it out of bounds. It's a uh, smart choice instead of taking a loss because he was way back off yeah, the line was. of scrimmage. Tried to circle around. Second and 10 from their own 32 yard line. Looking for something positive. That's gonna be number 24 once again for Wayland and that's Diagardi. like maybe a gain of one. It'll be third and Cox is third and eight, so it'll be a gain of two. It'll be third and eight from the 34. Again, trying to get something positive going here. We're going our second flag for the night. We see a lot of Hornell players pointing, so I'm assuming it's going to be, again, procedure on Wayland. Marching back another five. So they get about third and 13. From the 29 yard line, from their own 29 yard line. I remember last week that uh, number seven Piccolo had it. Watch, he was a fun little runner to watch. It's going to be a halfback option pass, and it's going to go. Nice catch. It's going to be uh, Andre Green. It was a halfback option. Uh, not a great throw, but uh, threw, hit the Andre Green on the run. So that's going to be the first nice uh, offensive play for the uh, Wayland Gold Eagles. Yep. They're into Hornell territory. The ball is just touching the 40-yard line. So maybe they'll have some more trickery. Usually you go to that too many times, though, Bobby. Bad things yeah, happen. Right. But you know what? I'm sure they would just like to get a... Nice catch. Nice, nice catch. catch. Boy, you could hear that. Hit, hit yeah. it right in the stomach. It hit it hard. And that was number uh, 11. Justin Horton for the Golden Eagles. That's going to be a gain of about six. Nice drive here going by the uh, Golden Eagles. 110 left. Clock is running. It's going to be second and four. Pretty sure they're going to come out passing so the defensive backs uh, for Hornell are uh, going to have a chance. Yep. He floats one up there. They're going to snatch it out of the air. Well, that one was high. Meant again for number 11, Horton. Ball went out of bounds, so it's going to stop the clock. 47 seconds left. Be third and four. Yep. Well, you know they're going to take two shots at. They're not going to punt. Yeah. Coach saw something now that it, it can bring in a halftime and uh, right. talk to the players and say, okay, maybe we can uh, we'll go out and we'll try to do some short passes, maybe some trick plays. we got nothing to lose. Angler's going to drop back. and Oh, the Hornell player hit his arm. Yeah. Oh, and that hit number 13 for Hornell. That's Pace Hooker hit him right in the hands. He's going to he, uh, gonna wish he had that one back. There was nobody near him. 
just the trajectory of the ball. I don't know, fooled him because it was hit at the line of scrimmage. Could bring up fourth and four from the 34. There's only 42 seconds left. I wonder if maybe they'll just go for the whole thing. Send everybody right deep into the end zone. He's gonna roll out to the right. And yeah, he's going for everything. And that's nice gonna catch. be a touchdown by Green. I think he's down at the one. Oh, it is a touchdown. Wow. But did you see him push off? I think they gave that one to him. He pushed off. I wish we had a replay. He pushed uh, he pushed Luke Smith right out of the way to get to the ball. Wow. Well, I mean, who cares at yeah. this point? But that was a nice drive. It was. And they found out their, you know, they, their passing game might work, which is the only thing that would ever get them back into a game like this. So I got a feeling the second half they're gonna come out passing. I'm sure they're going to go for two, but if they've got any kind of a kicker, they might better just go for the, uh, the extra point. I feel a trick play. Let's see what my crystal ball says. Well, oh, they're definitely going for two. Yeah. It's going to be Diagardi around the end, and, and nope. I don't know if he made it. No, no they've signally no, he did not. So with 35 seconds left in the first half, it's 41, Cornell 41, and Whalen go hot in six. So Whalen now down only by five scores. Jeez. <laughs> Did I see in the paper the other day? It was, um, I think it was Canisteel Greenwood against Cuba Rushford. They call it the hyphenated game. Why? They both have the hyphen that's two different, you know, it's oh, like yeah, Cuba yeah. Rushford, Kansas Steel Greenwood. Well, that's the way of everything's going, I think, eventually. Yeah. I think pretty soon you're going to see uh, Cancerrega, Arcport, Cancer Rega, however you want to say it. Yeah. I don't see Hornell ever. We've got a good, big enough school that uh, really there's not going to be anybody left. Right. But he'll be all hyphenated up. A couple of Hornell players started running the wrong end to, to get ready for the uh, kick. Oh, yeah, they did. So we're going to have uh, number one Styles and number eight Greenback. And here comes Grenthal. Apparently, he forgot that he was on the kickoff receiving. Of course, they don't get a lot, a lot of practice during the game. This could be number 33. Zesta Werney. It's going to be taken by Grenthal. Oh, he picked it up and he may, if he can outrun everybody. No, nope, he's going to get knocked out. Right? He's going to get knocked out by number 35. And that was Michael Hannon. But he, Grenthal picked up the ball and just ran past everybody. And the Raiders take over first and 10. And it's going to be right at the 50. I'm assuming they're going to let the clock die. Yeah, can't imagine they're going to run any kind of play. And that's what Grenthal. Probably going to be it for the first half. Hornell's going to go into the locker room 41 up, 41 to 6. Yeah, just going to let the clock tick down. Halftime's going to be our, we have the uh, halftime festivities are going to be the induction into the Hornell Sports Hall of Fame. Yep. Okay, so we'll be back Watch you enjoy the uh, halftime and we'll be back with second half after this. Our customers expect the highest level of sales and service here at Maple City Dodge. I buy my cars at Maple City Dodge because they have the best service. I tell them what I want, they get me what I want, and I'm happy. I came to Maple City Dodge because they had the charger that I wanted. I'll come back to Maple City Dodge because of their sales and service. Come on down to Maple City Dodge where we make buying a car easy and fun. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the 50-yard line where Mr. Mike Davidano will introduce the 2017 Cornell High School Alumni Association Hall of Fame inductees. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hornell High School Alumni Association's annual Sports Hall of Fame induction. It's a pleasure to once again host tonight's ceremony. We have five very deserving inductees who, in addition to tonight's recognition, will be honored at the Hall of Fame dinner tomorrow night at the Hornell Golf Club starting at 5 p.m. Also, there will be a reception this evening immediately following the game at the Carducci Lodge on Derry Avenue. First, Okina Gaston, class of 1988. Okina was a four-sport varsity standout as a young leader. He settled in soccer, basketball, softball, and track and field. On the track, Okina was an outstanding sprinter as a freshman in sophomore years. She was the 100 and 200 meter Class B section of champion both seasons. While set in section, Okina won no invitation of records in both events. Okina chose to play softball her junior and senior year. As a senior, she batted 413 while helping her team to a Section 5 title, also earning Class A All-Star and Most Valuable Player Awards. On the soccer field, Okina was a versatile player and sally in several positions. As a sophomore striker, she led the team with 16 goals and was named as an all Bend County selection for three consecutive years. She was also named to the all Sullivan Trail Conference team as a junior and senior. And as a three-year starter on the basketball team, Makita was, was a perennial all Sullivan Trail Conference team standout. One highlight of her career being a 27-point performance against Lamoni. Makita's basketball accomplishments led to a Division I scholarship to St. Bonaventure University in Oregon. Makita is a licensed addiction counselor and is employed by the Department of Corrections as an offender rehabilitation counselor. She's happily married to her wife, Janae Gaston, and has three stepchildren, Dustin, class of 2013, Soraya and Xavier, class of 2018, and a grandson, Jackson. Marquina remains active in Hornell and local area sports, coaching Middle League, YMCA youth basketball, and serves as a basketball and soccer referee, as well as a baseball umpire. Next is Craig Yandy, a 2003 graduate of HHS, where he was a soccer and tennis standout, earning seven varsity letters as a Red Raider. Craig had an outstanding tennis career, earning four varsity letters. As a sophomore, he was the team's number three player, and during his career, career quickly advanced to the number one position. Craig also partnered with teammate Ed McNellis to win a Section 5 doubles patch and advanced to the state qualifier tournament. But Craig is most remembered for his play on the soccer pitch, as a three-year starter in goal for the Raiders. Sophomore year, he was an integral part of the Hornell Boys Soccer first ever sectional championship team. He was a second team Livingston County All-Star and named to the Section 5 Class B All-Tournament team. As a junior, he was a number first team LCAA and Corning Leader All-Star and an All-Greater Rochester honorable mention. That season, Craig recorded 11 shutouts as the Red Raiders returned to the sectional championship game. Senior season, Craig reported a school record 15 shutouts while surrendering only four goals the entire season. He was named the second team Corning Leader and All Greater Rochester selection, as well as the LCAA Player of the Year. Craig continued his soccer career as a three-year starting goalie from the Dye College, helping his teams to an overall record of 50, 7, and 6 while going 21 and 1 his senior year thanks to Craig's performance and goal. He was a two-time All-Conference selection and a regional All-American, as well as an Adidas Scholar Athlete team member. He played semi-pro soccer, and he's coached women's soccer in the Dye, and currently at Elkin University, and Craig cannot be with us tonight because they are on their way to New York to play soccer. So accepting for Craig tonight are, the, are Michael and Alice Yanni, his parents, his wife Tricia, and daughter, Adeline. <laughs> Lindsay Murphy Kiefer was the salutatorian salutatori of, of the class of 2007. Her four-year athletic career includes numerous team accolades in soccer, basketball, softball, and track and field, including six Section 5 team championship shields, two in soccer and four in track. 
As a four-year soccer star, Lindsay was the first Lady Raider ever chosen for the Adidas High School All Girls All East Region Team. She was the 2006 Section 5 Class WB Championship Offensive MVP, named to the Class B All State Team, the All Greater Rochester Team, the Livingston County All Star Team, and two All Tournament Teams. In the 2005, she was the Boys Section 5 Class WB's leading scorer. In track and field, Lindsay was an outstanding middle distance runner. She was part of the Section 5 Championship 2006 4x400 meter relay team that advanced to the New York State Championship League, placed in seven. And she was a member of the 2007 Section 5 Class B Championship team. Lindsay and her teammates combined to run both the second and third fastest 1600 meter relay times in school history. Lindsay is passionate about all sports, but holds a special place in her heart for basketball. During her career at AJHS, she amassed 1,338 points, had a 35-point career-high game, and tied the school record for the most three-point field goals in the game. Lindsay's individual accolades include Class B 13 All-State, Ronald McDonald All-Star Game MVP, 2007 Livingston County D1 Player of the Year, two-time Section 5 Class WB All-Star Team member, two-time Evening Tribune Grade 8 MVP, three-time First Team Spectator Grade 8, three-time Livingston County New Super 8 First Team, and three-time Livingston County Division 1 All-Star. She was also a member of six alternative teams with three tournament MVP awards, and she was named a member of the New York State All-Star West Team. As a senior, Lindsay was named the 2007 Denver Van Student Female Athlete of the Year and was the 2007 Knights of Columbus Female Athlete of the Year. Lindsay continued her basketball career at St. John Fisher College as a freshman, where she was named Freshman Female, transferred to Alfred University as a sophomore, and as a Saxon, Lindsay had 1,261 career points and was named Empire 8 Conference 17 once and twice to the Empire 8. Empire 8 Conference first team. Her senior year, she was named A. Alfred University's Female Athlete of the Year. After graduating magna cum laude with a bachelor's degree in childhood education, Lindsay earned a master's degree in school counseling. She and her husband Justin and son Max now reside in Humpstown, Pennsylvania, where she's employed as a school counselor with the Donegal School District. Next we have William Bill Argentieri, better known as Chop. Chop is a 1945 graduate of Horn High School. During his high school athletic career, Bill was a few sports standout athlete who earned several varsity letters in football, basketball, and track and field. He also competed uh, with the swim team for a season. Bill also continued his athletic pursuits in college. At Alfred University, he excelled, earning 12 varsity letters in football, basketball, and track and field. He earned Division III All-American Honors as a Saxon, and was inducted into the Alfred University Sports Hall of Fame in 1975. After college, Bill earned his law degree from the University of Buffalo, served in the U.S. Army from 1952 to 54, returned to Hornell, and practiced law for over 35 years. He married Dorothy Ormsby in 1959, and together they raised three Hornell grads, Judy, Matthew, and Kate. Bill has six grandchildren, Olivia, Samuel, Ella, Ethan, Elise, and Evan, and continues to reside in Hornell. Last but not least, as a special contributor to Hornell High School Sports, Mr. Robert M. Peicher, class of 1986. Bob began his high school athletic career as a ninth grader on the junior varsity football team. With a series of injuries and four knee surgeries between ninth and twelfth grades sidelined him. So Bob picked up a video camera and began taping games for the Red Raiders sports teams. And the rest, as they say, is history. After working for Alfred State College as a video technician, Bob began Peich Video Productions in 1988, broadcasting Hornell Red Raiders Sports that same year. Since then, Bob has recorded over 220 football games, 
300 basketball games, as well as dozens of baseball and softball games, wrestling matches, and swim meets. In the early 1990s, Bob produced an air sports talk with John Gagan, a show that interviewed local high school athletes and coaches, in addition to airing weekly sports highlights. Always involved in youth sports, between 1988 and 2011, Bob coached two separate YMCA youth basketball teams yearly, and he continues to coach in the Sunday School Basketball League. Civically, Bob has been a member of the Horn of Kiwanis Club since 1995, and is the club's current president. And for the past 32 years, he's been a member of the Horn of Sports Night Committee, making him the longest serving active, longest serving active member. Today, with an internet connection and a digital service device, you can watch every high sports and high school production of live high school sporting events or get updates via social media from anywhere in the world. Generations of high school athletes, their parents, family and friends, as well as many local communities and their schools, for a tremendous thank you to Bob Peichel. Peichel, tonight one of those thank yous is here for all you've done for writer sports. In 2017, Cornell Alumni Association Sports Hall of Fame inductees. Yes, hello. Hi. I received a letter today from Workman's... You did your homework. You knew who to call, and you could tell right away you were in good hands. They told you exactly how things would go, and they were right every step of the way. No surprises is a good thing. You got the results you deserve, and you're thankful for the professionals fighting on your side. Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. You guys better watch us. Well, it's not live tonight. No, we feel bad. Jeez. Just can't figure it out. Everything worked perfect. The test this afternoon. Yeah. And it started up here all right, and then yeah. it just quit. I don't oh, understand. It was kind of strange again. I couldn't hear anything like I usually can. Yeah, my, our headsets are screwed up. Yeah. When I came in, this TV was on. I'd never seen that before. It was, like we said, Friday the 13th. Oh, so another missed it. That one, I don't think it even made it to the goalpost. It went underneath. Are they supposed to kick it with the side of their foot? I don't understand yeah. what the... Yeah. Well, remember, like Eric Davis, remember he put on that square... Remember he would take his shoe off, put on another shoe, and yeah. he went uh, you know, head on. The old-fashioned George Blanda kicker. Yep. Today's game is brought to you by Connors and Ferris. Workers comp attorneys, thank you very much. Maple City Dodge and Cornell. Stop up and check out the new 2018's job. Dodge Chrysler Jeep. John Dagan. Howard Hanna. Call Rhonda Wilsey at 382-4539. Howard Hanna. <laughs> yeah. I like that name. It's, you know, yeah. At least it stays with you. Nolf Nagel's a tough name yeah. to say. Of course, John and Dagan. Sounds like you're drunk trying to say something else. <laughs> Spence Wyan back again for a kickoff. Corner up 47-6. Whalen Cohocton about to receive the ball for the first time this half. And that's DeAndre Green brought down at approximately the 26-yard line. 
of Whalen Cohocken will be first and ten. Looks like it's closer to almost the 29 yard line. Need a, either a spotter or a new pair of glasses. Coach Warner went in and uh, told the players, be ready, defensive backs, because they're going to come out throwing. They had a little bit of success, and yep. they're down by a lot. Yep. St. Clair's pretty entertaining to watch. Oh, oh. You know? Who's that for Hornell number 77? Nobles just got leveled. By number 77, Ben Clark. Hi, hi. Angler's pretty entertaining. You know, he can yeah, escape. He can. His brother was a good quarterback. His brother was a good athlete, period. Number 54 for Hornell. That's Cam Sexsmith into the game. And Nobles is coming out. Probably got his bell rung a little bit. He got hit hard. But I don't think he saw the player coming. Completed pass for about four yards. He's yep. going to make it uh, third down and let's see where he plays it. Third down and five. Quite the scrambler because the yeah, Hornells, yeah. they're coming through. They just can't get to him. Oh, he must got hit at the line. Looked like the old uh, Tony Baton bounce pass. out the Wayland punt team and the Hornell punt receiving. It is running clock, so. Yeah, him has got the running clock due to the score. 27-6 Hornell. Wayland Cohocken's back to punt. Let's see if maybe they fake it. You know, they're way back there. Oh, oh blocked. blocked by Hornell. And that was number 47 for Hornell. And that is Jason Roy. Came through the line and blocked it. But Warren else can now take over. First and 10 at the 15 yard line of Whale and Kohaki. Yep. Whale and Kohaki, you know, they, they ended the half on a nice drive and a touchdown. I'm sure they went in the halftime. The coach said, hey, let's try it. We'll probably get the passing game going, see what we can do. There's some points on the board and just nothing surprised me as that. Okay. Warren else scored on the opening kickoff. Bobby Pusher was elected to the Sports Hall of Fame. Yep. If I hadn't mentioned that. Out with me, Bella. Yes, I saw that. I love that. And she's been up here for most of the game. Yep. They wanted to go home, though. Oh, did she really? Yeah, everyone, not that. The, my sisters did. Oh. Uh, and that's Piccolo, who I said he, I couldn't wait to see him come. He did a nice job last week. And he, his first carry, dropped the ball. So, Mr. Piccolo, don't let me down. Next one, Enzo. <laughs> Wyan in a quarterback. I believe that was, was that Renthal or Garner? I believe that was Garner. Gain of about one, if that. Thirty, Brandon Mormon. And number 20, Nolan Taichi into the game for Hornell. gone to their sub really early for the second week in a row. And there we go, we got uh, Piccolo. It's going to be short of the first down, so it's going to bring up fourth and, let's see where we're at, fourth and 
Nine. Oh, we're gonna try a field goal. Oh boy, we can't even. He couldn't even make it to the <laughs> crossbars the first. Time. Yeah, you might as well try it. Well, though. you know what? Why not try it? Yeah. Got sectionals coming up. Yeah. You need Jake Wyan back here uh, teaching him. This is going to be interesting. Oh! Oh, they kind of hurried that. Yeah. Nobody blocked the guy on the outside. That's number 53 running with it, and the Hornell team, they got the whole Hornell and team. And the ball got stripped. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh. That was 53, Ben Wood, and he carried uh, two or three Hornell players about 10 yards downfield. That's why you know, they ran into Milner, too, or Milner, you know, tripped yeah. over the guy. You don't want to get somebody hurt. He's kind of limping a little bit. And nobody blocked that guy. He just came in. Well, that's why they got to hit somebody big low. You see, he was just run down the field with three Hornell players. Yeah, he was. Cornell's got a whole bunch of new numbers out there on defense. Let's see if I can start reading a few of them off here. We've got number 15s in the game. That's Dylan Grenthal. Number one, Josh Giles. 47, Jason Roy, who blocked that uh, last punt. Number 26, that's going to be Tyler Garner. They're gonna throw a play with both. They were kind of hanging on each other. One was pushing and one was pulling. Yep. I don't see any flags. There's a flag down here. Oh, why can't I say I keep looking? I still it's don't see it. Right on the 35. Oh, I see it yard. now. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be on. It's gonna be on uh, Whalen. You can't score points if you're backing up the wrong way. No, you can't. volume keeps going up. I mean, it's not you, it just seems like it's loud. No, it's funny because we've never had it that low. We usually have it on two. Uh, one, you know, and, and. Getting soft since you became famous. <laughs> it happens to a lot of people. I just can't figure everything out that happens. I'm still upsetting. <laughs> I want special. everything to go perfect, you know. And, well. And the school worked hard to get this up, so it was up for tonight. And, that doesn't work. Here I did, not their fault. Something happened in my end. Nice run. Oh, he's going to outrun the Hall of Hornell. That's going to be a touchdown via Gardy. And Whalen has started their comeback with 343 left in this third quarter. They're going to go, uh, they're going to score uh, six points. It's going to be 47 12. I wonder if uh, the head coach from Whalen can say we don't want a running clock anymore. Yeah. Whalen's going to go for two, which they were unsuccessful the last time. He's, uh, he's got it that time. That's number 33. Uh, I forgot the clock's running even for a touchdown. 33, and that's Nicolia. I have a heck of a time, folks. Zasta Werney. Get your cans and bottles into Main Street Redemption, 324-3601. Opens seven days a week, Monday through Friday till 6, Saturday and Sunday from 9 to 3. Of course, Poulos and Roselle, attorneys at law with offices in the Crossroad Professional Building. Thank you very much, Poulos and Roselle. Call 324-7333. John, Dr. John Wine and Dr. Joseph McKay at Wine Cow Practic Associates. Stop in at 20 Park Drive. Get well and stay well with a visit to Wyan Cal Credit. Of course, Hornell Erie Federal Credit Union, Erie Avenue in Hornell. Stop and see Marty Piccolo. After you leave there, go right around the corner to Marino's, 110 Loader Street, and get a great meal open every night till 10 p.m. 
for food, and then the bar is open till 1 a.m. And the I clock is still ticking, even with the... <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they're going to go with the try to nine sides kick. We're now ready to receive for the first time in this half. Well, they tried on side, but they kind of squibbed it, and that's going to be taken by number 13 for Hornell, and that's going to be Pace Hooker. Now, it's my understanding Hornell next week will play the loser of Waterloo Newark. Okay, and that um, obviously will be here. Here, yep. And both teams aren't very good, you know, I guess. Right. At last I knew Newark hadn't won a game yet, but... And that was a couple weeks ago. I didn't check the last week or this week. And they would still make the sections? Yeah, I don't know how... Maybe they did get one win then. You know, that's yeah. the only thing I can think of. So Hornell's going to take over first and 10. The ball's going to be at their very own 42-yard line. That's Spence Wyan, a quarterback. Got pretty much the second string in there. It's number, what they got running back? They got Garner and, I can't see the other number there. Garner and maybe Grenthal. Oh, it's at number 24 again. Did you yeah, or 24. The mystery back. Got to get that solved. The we had it last solved. week, remember? I, know, I went I over. I threw the thing out. Yeah. I tried to clean up. I don't know, but I see, I see a couple flies that I killed here last year during football season. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's still here. Well, I mean, I just cleaned up the paper. There was yeah. a ton of paper sitting around here. Uh, wow, this is rotten pretty bad around the windows. Okay, Hornell has the ball, second down with two to go. No, it can't be, it's second down and the clock says two, it's gotta be about second and five. And that's gonna be number 24 again. He's got the first down. And that's gonna take us to the end of the third. Hornell up, 47-14. Read our reviews on our Facebook site and see why you should buy your next vehicle from us here at Maple City Dodge. I'm so excited. I got my first new car here at Maple City Dodge. The sales staff here at Maple City Dodge is amazing. I'll definitely be back. I test drove a lot of trucks, Chevy and Ford, came to Maple City Dodge, was much happier with the Dodge. They gave me the best deal. It's worth the drive to Maple City Dodge because we have the best sales and service and we'll prove it. The first and 10 from the 44. I'm surprised they don't start the clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of these games we're all going to be talking, we're going to have run a clock, and the game's going to end on a, on, a, on a timeout. Like Bogler says, it's a sprinting clock, yeah. not a running clock. <laughs> and for uh, Wayland, it can't sprint fast enough. I always like the shutout, but it's nice for those kids to. Uh, Wayland you know, had won two games coming into here. They beat Dansville and Wellsville, obviously two teams. So, yeah. and you can see Dan's, Wayland is better than those two teams. Yep. You know, no teams rebuilding. And they're going to be good. I mean, like I said, they've got uh, a lot of junior, sophomore, and freshmen. Yeah, they. It, sometimes it seems like they're rebuilding forever. You know how those yeah. teams are. They. Uh, you wonder how Hornell's going to be. I mean, with all those seniors we saw at the beginning of the game. Yeah. Well, you can get Rayon Buell to start with next year. Yeah, so we that's certainly not too do. Bad. You got one of the best defenders in you know, probably Section 5. We Y in under center. And that was Garner with the uh, quick handoff. Bobby, I remember going over to Whalen. It was Zach's senior year, and he was the smallest lineman on Hornell. And he had probably the biggest kid he went against all year long, outweighed him by 100 pounds. Yeah. And I remember after the game, he said, I'm just going home and going to bed. I'm exhausted. <laughs> 24 again with the ball. He's gotten to the outside. Oh, he's spinning. Oh, he's still on his feet. Wow. Still on his feet. And he's going to be pretty close to a first down after it looked like he was going to hit gonna hit right about the line of scrimmage. We're 
we're gonna ask we're gonna ask Billy to go outside and listen if he runs the ball again to see what John says. So we can't hear him. Or just go ask John. Or go ask John. Number 24. <laughs> they knew what we were over there for last week. The minute I walked in, they started telling me. Boga, go go next door and ask him. Please. Please. Ten thirty-seven left. We're now driving. First and ten at the uh, the Whalen Cohocton thirty-four. It's gonna be a handoff again to number twenty-four, and he's got some running room, and he's gonna get probably nine yards, maybe eight. Yep. See, uh, the boys and girls soccer team must must mean nothing for sectional play because they were both scheduled to play Allegheny Limestone, and Allegheny Limestone's got a very good team, but they canceled the because apparently they didn't need to play. You know, it wouldn't have mattered if they right. won or lost in their positioning. So both teams, yeah, it's strange. You know, you maybe yeah. you would think Allegheny Limestone might have needed them, but they didn't. That's a haul from here. Yeah. There we go. It's going to be first down. And that this time was number, oh, it's 24 again. It's about, uh, it's about 65 miles. It's probably from here, 60 miles. Yeah. I used to go through it all the way. To when I, I remember when Nate was on baseball, they played there once. Yeah. And there was no fence. The oh, ball would roll out and underneath the cars. Demetrius Kabik. That's right. Number 24, Demetrius Kabik. He looks good. Yeah, he does. He looked good last week. Kabik again, yeah. he's going to be hit right almost immediately, immediately got the ball, but maybe a gain of one. I think that was kind of mishandled that time by Wyand. And you know, he was going one way, Kabik going the other way, and they kind of ran into each other. Getting at the Kabik. I wonder what grade, do we know what grade Kabik's in? Heck, we didn't even know Both who he was a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even know who he was a few minutes ago. Yeah. He could be in eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, who's that? Tigner and Hickson are in the game. I saw Tigner while I was jogging today and I yelled over to him. Congratulations on your catch last week. Oh, said, did you? Thank you very much. You're very polite. Very polite. Where do they boy. live? On Buffalo Street? Uh, I don't. I was. He was walking into the to the game here. Oh, I was okay. over oh, by. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I was over by Main Street. Now the kid's name is Freddie, right? Yeah. And so his father must be Freddie too. Right. I'm assuming. Freddie, silent Freddie. It never says much. No. <laughs> Lives over. He used to live on the corner of Genesee and Pearl, I think. Cramping up. <laughs> I've been that. having some bad issues after two straight weeks. Got out of the police car to get somebody a ticket today, and I couldn't even walk to the car. Did you almost say heck with it? Uh, I, <laughs> I let him go. <laughs> First and ten for Hornell. Again, Kabik. Oh, he may go all the way. Oh, Touchdown, what a reach! What a great run. He's a nice runner. Yeah, he is. That's two for him tonight. Oh, the second team on the board. I like he is fast, and he's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just not, no frills, just fast. Yeah, north-south runner. Well, when you're looking at this field, though, it's, he's going from east, east to west. west. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember the old, remember the old field, the old, uh, cinder track oh, it yeah. would rain out and about 5,000 seagulls would come and hang out because this end of the track the uh, that west end of the track would be flooded yep of course where we're standing right now was the pool yep that was a lifeguard for one year oh no I was gonna say oh that, see that 
referee threw the flag right into the crowd of people. <laughs> Remember in the pros years ago, yeah. I think this guy in the Cleveland Browns got hit in the eye. Yeah. And then he ended up suing the NFL because it ruined his career. Yeah. And the, the guy pushed the official, remember? Yeah, yeah. There's Boga, what's his name? Orlando Brown. Orlando Brown, did, isn't that, he didn't play much after that, did he, Billy? No. We're blessed with the pre, there we go. There, now he's back on. That was good. Oh, I thought not only is the camera, are we having issues here, not all the electricity went off. And the clock just keeps on ticking. What are you doing? You got to work tomorrow, Smitty? I do not. Want to go to the uh, Caraducci Lodge for a few? Well, after this? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's where the meet and greet is. You, is can, it? you can talk to me and ask what? me what I <laughs> How do I think it is to be in the Hall of Fame? Uh, sure, I'd like to go for a cocktail. I just got to run home and drop this ticket. Yeah, I got to get some money. Yeah. Well, you know what? Hey, Let's you can buy all you. night. Yours <laughs> probably free. No, you got to treat the honoree. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll get 10 bucks out of the uh, ATM. Uh, yeah, we went out one night last year. We had a good time. At the yeah. Oh, yeah, we went to Cotter's. Cotter's yeah. That, was that the first time you'd ever been in there, or a long time? Too? Long time, yeah. And I've been there once time since. Yeah. Going there when Gary, uh, when Gary Shepard plays. Yeah. Oh, oh. Good night, Irene. He may not get up. He got hit like a train. He got hit by a train, I should say. So the Golden Eagles are going to take over, first and 10 at their own 33, 3.47 left in the game. They're down by 40. They've got a 40-point play here. Razzle-dazzle. They had to ruin the sprinting clock by calling a timeout. <laughs> Put together that 40 point play. Nice. Uh, you know, I, I never, I, you know, and I, we've said it before, you always want competition. You know what I mean? It'd be like that bath game. Remember when we, when Wyan threw the reverse over to Caleb Burdett or over in the, you know, to win the game at the end? That's exciting. Yeah. These I forgot games, about that, yeah. These games we're talking about midwives and. <laughs> <laughs> so now I said it twice. That's two weeks in a row that's come up. <laughs> Now, did you come here with like a horse and a rickshaw or whatever the Amish are? No, midwives are an actual profession and they still exist. I looked it up after we left here. I was that interested to find out what midwives meant. I couldn't be any more or less interested than I was last week. Well, because you said you were born at Bethesda and I told you I was born, you know, through a midwife. You were. Here we go. Got the 40 point play. We got a new quarterback in. Is that Maybe they decided to put to try to get some of their kids in too. But yeah. they, don't, they don't have a large squad. But that was number 12 for Whalen with the with the ball, and that was uh, Dalton Sims, son of the legendary Billy Sims. Yeah, and that'd be nice. Not really. <laughs> we need something to talk about. Who is the Atlanta running back? White Shoes Johnson or White? No, he, Billy he was, White Shoes. Yeah, he was on uh, the Houston Oilers. He wasn't a running back for Atlanta, huh? No, Houston Oilers. Who was the Atlanta? Oh, no, Vogler says you're wrong. Our, our, he was on both. Oh, okay. But he was he was a wide receiver, I believe, wasn't he? Yeah, flame. Okay. Our statistician. Oh, oh and it brought hits. down behind the line of scrimmage by number... Nine. Number nine for Hornell. Let's call that name out. Kevin Hickson. Yep, Hickson. Rhymes with Richard Hickson. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching, you know, I watched 60 Minutes every, and this is like the 50th anniversary, so they replayed the very first 
and there was an interview with Richard. It's re I wish they'd replay. You could find the old ones online because the interviews with these people yeah, they're before their before their he was president. You know what yeah. I mean? It was some really neat things, and it's so clear. It's like watching it like it was filmed yesterday. As they use film and. Brendan Deeps with the leaping, stretching tackle. Yeah, he missed a few games because of concussion this year. You know, he's played real well both weeks, the last two weeks. You know what? He can't be more than about a buck ten, six foot ten. Yeah, he's very tall. Very tall, very thin. And they have another one coming up too, right? His son. He's got two. They've got two. Two more boys? Oh, no, I'm sorry. They have Andrew. I'm sorry. Okay, I was going to say, I knew they already had one. It's in the military, correct? Yep. Uh, he, they was in the military. Oh, he was? Michael, he's been out for a couple years now. Jesus, that he's older. in the Navy, yeah. They have Patrick. And speaking of Navy, today's the birthday of the Navy. I am a huge uh, oh! Navy SEALs um, Navy Seals guy. You know, I yeah. love to read about the Navy SEAL. I was going to throw that in there. I was a Navy SEAL. In my oh, yeah. <laughs> I may not have been, but it would have sounded cool. We never heard of you because it was that you were on SEAL Team 6. They can keep everything very quiet. I was SEAL Team 8. <laughs> it was so secret. <laughs> I was a SEAL Team of 1. <laughs> oh, is that what it means, SEAL Team 6 is 6 men? No. What they did is they had, they made different numbers so that they thought that there was a lot more SEAL teams. Oh. And SEAL Team 6 is kind of a different, they do like um, international stuff with, uh, you know, they don't just do like military stuff. So, 51 starts, 50 seconds ago, the clock is counting down. Cornell has the ball, first and 10 at the 38 yard line of they're not going to run the and Golden play. Eagles. See, the official hasn't even blown the. Well, I guess they're going to run and play. On his knee, it looks like this could be the end of the game, folks. Yep. As Wyant takes a knee. Cornell starts jogging off the field with another victory, which leaves them with an undefeated regular season at 7 0. <laughs> After these last two weeks, we'll say they're like 5 and a half and 0. <laughs> Smith to Bobby Peicher. I just heard him announce that the game will be uh, next uh, week here at Maple City Park on Friday. Yep, and we don't know. It's either going to be Waterloo or Newark. Whoever loses that game will be here next week. Both teams, I believe, have one victory. So, like we talked about, yeah. the, the, the loser or the winner. Now, how does that work? Yeah. Right, whoever, if they didn't win a game, like Cornell was winless, remember they played the yeah. Connors and Ferris yeah. Bowl. So they avoided the Connors and Ferris Bowl by winning a game. You know, I gotta believe after, if like, you go 0 7, as nice as it is to have like a consolation, I bet you just wanna skip the, because the practices are, you know, the weather's cold. Probably most of the kids play basketball and the gym is yeah. nice and warm. Remember when Hornell was winless and then they played the Holly Hawks? I thought it was a made up name. It was like Holly seven to Hawks. six we won, didn't we? Yeah, seven to six victory. That's when we were class C. So okay, for Chris Smith, I'm Bob Peicher. Thanks for joining us. Another Peich Sports broadcast of Hornell football.